All right, good morning, girls, and good morning, YouTube. Uh, got my hand out. We're gonna make this kind of quick. It's not too bad, actually, though. It is December 22nd, and uh, 18 below here this morning with a no wind yet, at least where I'm at, and the buildings here. Everybody's a little frosty, and uh, yeah. We're supposed to have like 30 mile an hour winds a day, gusts up to like 40, and it's gonna be 15 to 20 to blow all day, depending on where you're sitting. So, just another day in North Dakota. Had this Arctic blast come through. Most of the country's feeling it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna feed these girls here really quick and get her done. So our pail is fed, and that is done. All right, we gotta check waters quick, make sure they didn't freeze up. Well, Luna's getting a drink, so that tells me it's good. Oh man, so we had a bunch of snow a week ago and more snow came down after that. Our trees look like a mess. Everything's just a mess. Bed straws often as you can. Try to keep them high and dry. This sounds mentally ill for what I'm about to say, but it's not that bad. It's 17 below right now. What I just checked, I walked out of the house. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day actually, for now, until the winds pick up uh, this afternoon. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's cold, but you get used to it. Just part of uh, part of being a Norski. When you're a Norski, the cold is just another uh, another season. But yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna give you a little sample of what it's like to do chores when it's this cold. And uh, I'm doing it myself, obviously, but uh, my dad is out for the year or until about springtime at back surgery. So uh, this entire calving season and uh, all the feeding, I'll be doing myself this year. Uh, things just take a little more time, but yeah, we're gonna finish up chores here. Gotta feed the horse. Look at that beautiful sun. Nothing like living in a freezer, baby. Think about this, we got stuff in the base of my house in theory, in our freezer, that we're keeping warm. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, gotta drink this coffee before it gets cold. Show you the line here. Got about two feet of snow. It's up past my knee there, or about to my knee. But we have about two feet of snow here in the last uh, system and change. So that definitely uh, started us off winter the, the long way. I should say the hard way, I guess. But it's gonna be a long winter. Um, you know, the first batch is that heavy wet stuff, so it really stuck to the roofs, which kind of, you worry about snow load and the weight there. I'm walking around because my lazy ass ain't walking through that. I'm taking a long way. Um, so yeah, worry about snow load. Uh, but you know what, silver linings? I think by the end of next week, we're talking like 30s. I'm just wearing a sweatshirt and like a down flannel pullover. Um, you know, it's not that bad, like I said, if you're busy, you're doing stuff, you stay warm. But uh, my pants, these are just like, uh, they're Eddie Bauer, like snow pants. They're well insulated. That's all I'm wearing is just the pants. I got just the skivvies on underneath, man. And I tell you what, there, there's days where you're sweating in them. So I've kind of found over the years, I don't like wearing bibs. I don't like wearing a bunch of bulky clothing. It's hard to get in and out of the skid steer and the tractors. And then you're just sweating. I know you can go through layers, but I found things that are like a little more, uh, you know, you know move, you're know, you more movable, you're know, moving them a little better. It's a little more athletic uh, wear type of deal. Um, so, in and out of stuff and, and you're not just so bulky and getting caught on stuff. I don't like that. I like being able to jump over in and out of stuff, climb around and not have to feel feel uh, suffocated. But anyway, uh, yeah. Then I went with the lacrosse boots, man. I used to have the uh, the buck boot, but it wore out at the seams. Uh, it, it, it would separate like the heel and stuff like that after so many, it's not really made for the weather. So these are all, I think it's neoprene. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they hold up and they're warm. So, 
It's got the lacrosse boot on, some Eddie Power, Eddie Power, Eddie Power, Eddie Power. Uh, lacrosse boot, Eddie Bauer snow pants, and then sweatshirt and some goose down flannel or whatever. My neighbor gave me this, bless her heart, right? She gave me this, she was probably thinking, man, that guy's good. he's hard up, he needs some clothes. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I love it though, it's, it's warm. And then just the old stocking cap, and I tell you what, the trick is here, I'll show you. These gloves, man. These are these are just Eddie Bauer uh, mountain work gloves or whatever they are, and they're waterproof. They're leather. They got the nice uh, cuff, so you don't get hay and chaffed on your your forearms. So I tell you what, they're like when they're on sale, I think they're like forty bucks, and uh, yeah, well worth the money. I mean, I'm putting my hand in water tanks, cleaning stuff out and doing stuff out. I mean, like they're it's unbelievable. Uh, they're warm, they're comfortable, uh, they fit your fingers actually, there's not like those weird weird fingertips, you know, some gloves give you, they, they go, they fit right on the hand. I got bigger hands, so like, like I said, that that's uh, that's a comfortable glove, I'll, I'll back that right there. Um, but yeah, you get yourself a good pair of gloves when you're up here, because you're working outside the whole time. Cattle are waiting there on the other side of the trees. I got a bedum straw here yet today too, so quite a bit of chores to do. It is a little bit later in the morning. I usually like having this stuff done, uh, you know, between 7.30 and 8.30, but with bringing kids to daycare and a bunch of odds and ends at home and doing chores at home with the replacement heifers and the butcher steers and the horses and all that stuff, it just, we get here and we get here. It'd be different if I was calving, it'd be way different, but we're not calving yet, so. Well, we're gonna hook this bad boy up quick and uh, we'll get rolling. Turn this off. There we go. Now, I could leave this feed wagon hooked up. It doesn't take long to back up, drop a pin, throw the PTO on, and uh, get back at it for the day. So, but I could. Oh, look at that. We gotta crank up the jack stand too now because we had snow last night. So we're sitting a little higher. Great. So there's a con, right? That pisses a guy off. It's not gonna get out like three times. You know, you know. Um, but yeah, I could put it in the shed back home, but I've been liking to put my pickup in there at night with these cold nights, so. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up. Be right back. Shut this up. Keep the cold out. So, yeah. Great, that's why you wear gloves. Dumbass. All right, got both of my hands. So I could probably turn up the hydraulic flow on this, don't get me wrong, but there's no reason for that to go super fast, especially when it's cold, those augers. Uh, we're just dropping some silage out of it, and I don't need it throwing anything off or wrecking anything in the cold. And then the last one is we check the PTO. And you make sure the uh, drum is turning there, which it is. All right, everything's a go. So now we shut her down, bring her up, make sure this is closed, which it is. Idle her down to a decent speed there. Now she'll sit here and idle while I take the cold walk. There's that windbreak wall I set up with the feeders back there that we built. Took out those bins, got the pads, put the gravel and the dirt there. So that's been working out really nice. They're covered, they're behind out of the wind. Um, they're on solid ground. Obviously, everything's solid right now. It's frozen, but cement slab should work out nice. And got gravel over the dirt. I kind of wish I would have showed a little preview of that. Even got the drone up for that before uh, we got all this snow. Yeah, that's a mess over here. I'm gonna start up the MXU and the bale processor here as well. That way, that's warm when we get back to uh, go bed straw. You gotta keep everything plugged in so glow plugs don't cycle too long. That little squiggly line right there. Starts right up. Perfect. We put a pretty good dent in this thing already. I've only been feeding for all oh, four days now. So that kind of makes me nervous. Uh, I might be feeding a little too much maybe, but like I said, normally I mix this off with some grass hay and 
snow will melt when you mix it in there. Uh, so I've been feeding straight silage. The girls are kind of getting spoiled like that, but yeah, normally I have a little grass to mix in there, so I got a pretty good dent it looks like in the pile, but and we actually ground a little bit more this year too. Glad we did. So we don't put a tarp or nothing over our silage pile. Um, it keeps fine. Then the other thing is we put bales, as you can see, for our bunker. I'll show you here. It's just one row of bales on the outside. We reinforce it when we're packing it, so we have outside bales around this whole thing while we're building it. But then when we're done, I've kind of noticed we take that extra outer row away. So it's just a single row of bales stacked around to uh, to have the bunker. The reason I take the extra bales away is because all these bales end up spoiling anyway and the outer bales end up getting all screwed up between the juices from the pile and just snow hitting them. So yeah, you don't need all that extra hay up there. We end up grinding these bales down the road anyway. We mix them in with a grinder. So once we, uh, as we chew the pile back, the bales come off from the front and they go into the hay grinder. And it kind of has a little caramel, like caramel apple, right? The, the, the bales got that silage taste to them. And so the cows love it. But yeah, we got the old real Augie 3300 here. She's gonna mix up a hell of a meal. Operating a skid steer with one hand and the other one holding onto a camera because my suction cup thing I forgot the other angle at home, so it's not gonna mount correctly for you to watch. So I gotta do it this way. This whole recording and trying to show people stuff, and I'm doing it myself, trying to explain, trying to work, trying to, yeah, doesn't really work well for me. So that's why some of this stuff is a little rough, let's put it that way. But yeah, all right, so now that would be my, I believe my I'm talking thing in fourth scoop. Each scoop is roughly 900 pounds. So I'm gonna do just a smidge more. Just kind of maybe clean up it, clean it up a little bit. Make it so it's even here. I'll come in and get level, take a, not a big one, but something like that. So we're just entering the pile. As you can see, I got a nice smooth cut there. Uh, there's like clay on the bottom here, so I know I'm not digging down at all But when I'm entering the pile, I'll, I'll clean up those edges and I'll clean up this edge over here And it'll be a nice flat wall and then from there I eat I, I go left to right right to left and uh, Load it evenly, but well, since we're just entering in here. Uh, I just take it Kind of clean it up in the front right away All right, so there's our hot silage steaming We'll mix it up Look at that Steam off the bucket, steam off the wagon. We'll mix that up now. And uh, feed the cattle. I got a scale on there, I don't have that plugged in right now. Not too worried. That's more for when we start splitting the lots. We have cows in the west lot, cows behind the barn. Um, so you know they're getting the right amount and just not willy nilly feed them whatever they want. So. Again, I can't run at the same time, so I'm going to bring it up to the shy 1500. Now I'll hit my BTO. I don't like doing that personally, um, but I'm getting away with it, so I ain't complaining. But one of these days, I don't think that's going to work. And we're going to have to shovel this out or else tip the some bitch on its side. Dump it out. All right, so we're gonna go feed the cows here. Well, that mixes up. We'll go a little slower. So it's a good mix to it. Well, that mixes up. Uh, yeah. What else? I got. I really got nothing else to say. It's just been cold out, and uh, things just take longer in the cold. More time to idle a tractor, right? Diesel's cheap. Shit. Let the tractor run for an hour just to warm up to do 30 minutes of chores this time of year. Now when you're calving, it's different because tractors moving around straw, tractors, you know, 
there's skid steers feeding this lot, feeding that lot. You're moving calves around. You're bedding barns. I mean, there's you know, it's it's running for you know, but for right now the feed wagon runs. I, I got that tractor running. We're gonna bed some straw here while they're on their bunk line. Right here's my bunk line, and it's lined it up close to the gate here. I close the gate at night so the cattle stay locked in. Not that they're gonna go do anything, but a lot of this electric fence is under snow now. I mean, it's even dipping down right there, so they could just walk away if they want. They have, they have no reason to, but they know the meal's coming. They're all sitting there waiting. So also, they're out of my way when I start filming. You know, they get in the way, they're hungry. They know it's coming, so they'll just bombard you. So I kind of like to have them away from me while I do this. So there goes down the uh, auger nice and slow. Once we get that down and running, we'll open up the gate. We'll speed up our mixer a little bit. All right, so there we go. We'll open this up, only do about halfway, there we go. And I'm not here, oh there we go. And I'm way too high here. But yeah, this is feeding cows. Just the corn silage hole, so it's a little rich. Like I said, um, they uh, usually get grass hay in here with it. They just go down the bunk line. Try to make them even as possible. That way everybody gets about the same and there's plenty of bunk space here for the cows we got this year. Um, actually there's a whole nother three bunks in the west lot that we're not even using. And there's seven out here. They're 20 foot long steel feed bunks. Some of them are common sense feed bunks, common sense manufacturing, and some are, I don't know what they are, but there's my common sense bunk. Got a couple of those in here. Those are durable bunks, I'll tell you that right now. I really like that common sense manufacturing. They make a good bunk. Um, but some of these other ones are just old feed lot bunks that we picked up at an auction. And they work nice, but you know, they're not made as well, so the legs start to bend a little bit. Things just give out after time. But these common sense, man, they've, they've been tried and true. They work well. All right. So yeah, after I get done feeding them here, I'll uh, open up the gate, and they will come running out here like crazy. Also, I know it's risque, but uh, I leave the gate down. I, they're not gonna leave. They've, they've got food there, and all they wanna do is go back and lay over there, and their bales over there. So, there's nothing out here for them. They don't leave that, that pen. Plus, I'm gonna be going back through there with the tractor anyway, and the bale processor to bed their straw. So, yeah, did not close the gate. Maybe I'll regret that one day, maybe not, we'll see. But yeah, we're gonna run up the yard now, we're going to grab the uh, bale processor and we're going to bed some straw. I'm going to save that walk back to the skids here after I'm done. That'll be the last thing I do. Too cold. I'm going to stay in the tractor. All right, and just like everything else, I kind of warm up the hydraulics before I use it. So I'm actually got this number one handle ahead right now. We're putting down those forks. Things are cold. This hasn't been used in about three days for that matter too, so it's really been cold. Tractor's nice, it's all warmed up and it's been plugged in. So once that's down, which it is now, we'll come back up with it. It'll go a little faster every time, look at that. Pretty smooth. All right, we'll go down again, see a little faster this time. Get that warm hydraulic fluid in there flowing around. Get this all working good. Now after the arm is warmed up, and I'll go back and do my number two handle, which will be the rollers inside there. Get them warmed up. I bet you can't see this dirty back window. There we go. 
Rollers are rolling. Both ways. Alright, and that's done. And just for fun, I always put that wing down just to make sure that's working. So I switch this over. Deflector there. So I can put my armor down now. So that's working. Just to make sure everything's working, you got fluid flowing through everything. Kind of a routine maintenance check on the old bail processor. Um, that number right there, you can see, I'll show you in a second here. Switch this back over to the left arm. There you go. Those numbers right there, five, four, three, two, and one, that arm depicts on, there's a cage in there. And here's the best way I can describe it. Uh, within that cage, let me see here. A bad shot, let's see. Within that cage, there's, your knives are going around, right? And they're, and they're catching the, the straws on the bottom. So if that cage is set to a higher number, the lower that cage sits, so those knives come around, they grab more. The higher that number, if it's on a one, it's just barely coming by and nicking it. So I have that set down low, so I can grab a lot of the straw at one shot. So when those knives go around, it's grabbing big chunks and, and having longer strands of the straw. Shorter, uh, you know, less your knives touch it, the finer it's gonna chop it up and uh, make it nice. And then that little black arm down there, right there, is just for uh, having a pan, it's like the bottom flip out, and then you can win row better. Um, making a feed line with this thing. All right, enough of me talking about annoying, stupid stuff. We're gonna go ahead and use the machine and shut the up, right? All right, so how this works is you try to drive with one hand and a camera in the other, and you back up, and you're in a high gear and a high idle and everything's gonna be jerky, and you go ahead and see if you can nab a bale. And see, we slid into the other row because that's just what happens when everything's covered in snow. And I can move my back little, my little bale caddy, my little bale processor around with ease. She kind of slides where she wants sometimes. All right, there we go. And sometimes you gotta pull ahead, but I think she's gonna push me ahead a little bit. And then comes that snow block. Don't worry though, oh, I must have caught a little. Now you're blind, so we just kind of aimlessly drive back. That's why I have everything in rows. And there we hit the other one. And we might have to pull ahead just a tish. And by the fact that that one moved, I'm assuming I got us, and I come ahead a little bit and I turn. And then look in that mirror, and there it is. There's another one up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm gonna put her down a little bit. There we go. So now it's not pushing on the other one. We're gonna chip this bad boy down. That skid's here just sitting there idling still. Like I said, just burning fuel. Cheap fuel. Good. We blended 70-30, right? So it's 70 number uh, one and 30% number two. Now I'm gonna come in here and spear a straw bale, and I'll take the one I kind of messed up. Motor hydraulics are pretty cold yet. So here we go. Time to go bed some straw for the cows, make their beds. So when they get done with that hot meal, they'll be able to lay down and be cozy. Some of those old girls, they don't need to be standing in this shit. All right, so now we'll start bedding straw. This is the base layer of the pile. This pile gets hauled out every year. Um, so this all gets scooped up. We got a customer hauler in here that cleans all this up for us. He does an excellent job. He does not take dirt. He hauls out the pile every year so we have fresh bedding. You know, keep disease, keep everything clean. Um, but yeah, so this is the start of the pile every year. So I try to make a nice even base layer because at the end of the, by, by uh, May, this bad boy's a, a mound, so. We'll start out here by idling down, shifting down to low gear, so we're gonna crawl through this thing. Fire up a processor. Let me bring it up a little bit. I don't like to run it wide open because I can shoot that straw over into those trees. I'll take this first layer of snow off here. As you can see, it's just a bunch of snow. Once we crack into the bale, then I'll start 
moving a little bit here. There we go, now we're getting some nice straw. We'll open up this back window. Got to see how she's done. Bail rolls nice and easy in there. Nice bedding of straw, nice and even. Just crawl through. Right about there is where we stop. Finish kicking that stuff out. Rattle this thing down. Like I said, you can walk through there. You're gonna have a hard time finding any net wrap. We'll dump this bad boy in right away. Kick this we'll pull ahead of hair. Just kick that snow off. Does that snow? All right. Fire back up. Again, we're gonna take off that first layer of snow over an area where there's no straw. Once we start getting in some good straw, I'll back up. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit because we're starting to make a little bit of a pile right there. There we overlapped where we were at before. It up a little bit, see if we can see, get a little bit of a pile there. I wanted that to go further, but that's that first layer yet with a little bit strong. Cows will kick it around, they even it all pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna shut that. We're gonna set this bale down. We're gonna kill this thing. Hold on, idle down, BTO off. You set this bale down now. I'm gonna set it right there. I'm gonna bed in here with this one. Get inside the windbreaks a little bit. I've been doing three bales, cause like I said, it's been snowing nonstop. I'm not gonna bed out four or five bales and just have them get rid of snow on these bales. Right now, the price of straw where I live, you're looking at about 40 bucks for a thousand pound round bale. Off the fuck. You know, you can go to auctions or dairies, or whatever, big squares, you're looking at about $120 a ton. But right now it's about 80 bucks a ton for, for rounds. Um, I got Walker straw, they're out of 9,600. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lay out what? 40 at uh, three alone is $120. So every time I bed these cows, which has been every other day with these storms, it's $120 a day just in bedding. You know, that's obviously what I could get. It's not my cost, but still, I figure everything in the fact of what it would cost if you had to buy it. That's the only way you can make money in the real, I mean, honestly, you gotta always factor that in. What would it, what, what could I make if I didn't have the cattle? And what's it costing me? Uh, with the cattle, so that's how I factor it out. But yeah, right now it's a uh, $120 in bedding, um, fuel, electricity plugging in the tractors, rural water. You know, every day these cattle are costing you money. Uh, you just hope the market stays up and rides through to, to make a little bit. <laughs> and I say it, I mean that a little bit. All right, here we go. Here's the next bale. Nice and smooth. We're gonna back into this pocket here. I like the bed into this windbreak area I set up for them. So this kind of like encapsules or you know, enca is it encapsulates? Encapsulates? Capsulates? Is that a word? Anyway, it's encapsulates. Encapsulates the uh, the end of the pile. This is some dumb hazy plowboys what I am, right? Um, and so this is kind of the end of the pile. So yeah, we leave these windbreaks here. I actually have some more that'll go back there along the backside, along the trees. The trees are getting a little thin, a little older, so uh, that'll protect there as well eventually. But right now they're blocking the pole barn. There's three of them over there. Once we're done with that, we'll open up the pole barn. Once it starts really getting nasty, this ain't nothing yet. Um, and we'll uh, let them in there and bed that. If we start putting them cattle in that pole barn right now, by the time we get to May, you won't be able to drive a tractor in there, let alone It'll be so much, I mean, it just, it's too much. They, they're fine outside these cattle, as long as they got proper nutrition to stay warm and energy, uh, they're fine being outside. You're not, they're not getting hurt by anything like that. So, um, yeah. Getting rid of that first layer again. Shift the 
pile's all done there. Nice embedded. They'll kick it around, even it out a little bit more in some of those clumpy areas. Plus, some of those clumpy areas are, uh, you know, you want it like that because pretty good pile of frozen landmines there already. So, um, I see they are got one bale of hay left out of their seven feeders up there. So, I'm going to go feed them quick with the skids here now. But the straw is bedded. They're finishing cleaning up their feed bunk. Still gonna leave the gate open because I'll be coming through here with the skid steer to uh, feed hay. There goes the other thing, okay. Let's just talk numbers for a second. So I just betted $120 worth of straw. Now you wanna jump into the fact that what's a bale of hay worth? Well, this year, even though the hay was abundant where I live, uh, there's still a price tag behind putting it up and you know, you got cash rent, fertilizer, input costs, you know, all your machinery. You start figuring out, I mean, still we're selling hay on the average for a hundred bucks a bale for good, you know, second cutting alfalfa, no problem at all. So now I'm gonna feed seven of those. That's $700 in hay, one day. You had $120 in straw just now. We're at $820 of inputs just in the bales alone. The chopping of that corn, the cash rent of that corn, the insurance behind it, Everything adds up. And then they got a portion of that today. So what that cost per, you know, basically you figure that out per pound, you know, for your tonnage. All right, now the cold walk back to the skid steer. But wait, I don't have my knife, it's in my pickup. Damn it. Well, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to uh, run home and get a knife, but I don't have anything to run home in. I just have the tractor and uh, that's it. All right, well, commercial break. Be right back. All right, she's back unhooked. I just put those cloths in there for now because I cleaned them off. All good to go. She'll sit here till tomorrow morning. Now I got to go and uh, run home quick and grab my knife because I totally forgot my knife. And I'll tell you one thing right now. I ain't using some shitty knife to cut off all this frozen net wrap when it's go time in the cold. So I want my good knife. So I'm gonna home and grab that. I'll be right back. All right, now we're gonna go start uh, feeding the hay to the round bale feeders. Got the skits here. We got the spear and the bales over here. I'm gonna hook onto that, and we'll uh, start feeding some round bales. So I do it one bale at a time with the skitter. It may seem like it takes a long time, but it doesn't really. It's pretty quick. The girls all bedded down after a nice warm meal. Belly's full. Now I got the. Uh, Kind of the, the grazing snack here now with the, the alfalfa grass mix. Um, yeah, I'll show you, get, get back in here a little bit. I'll show you my little hay setup I got. Where are we feeding them their alfalfa at? So the Guardian bale feeders have been working out really well, I must admit. Um, there's no waste, there's not a mess out here. They clean them up. You know, and they're protected back here, so that's that's all that matters, man. It's it's been uh, it was a good investment. I'll give it that. You know, I could push these cows a little bit more, and they could clean up the uh, the bottoms of these feeders a little better if I really wanted to be aggressive. But so far, I'll give you a little tour here. They're down in here looking it up. You know, a lot of it's just some stem stuff. Um, and then kind of what you're seeing here is the the bottom with the bales sitting on, so it'll be like this flat dirt spot, you know. But Otherwise, they've been looking good. Feeders are getting cleaned up. Um, you can, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the wind is like wisping through the wind breaks. It's very calm back in here, so that's nice. Um, being like I said, this little bit of grass alfalfa, you know, there's a weed in there. There's that thick one right there. There's some thicker stuff in here, but like I said, it's... For being a third cutting, it uh, I kind of went and scraped some stuff up and made the most out of it. Um, but it's it's some nice hay actually. Once we get down into the gist of it, it's nice and green, it's leafy, it's fine stem. But like I said, where I was cutting, I don't remember what field it was, but there's a weed or two in there. But it's a uh, rich feed for being where they're at in the feed cycle right now, being at the end of December. Excuse me, mamas. Yeah, they're doing well. Like I said, I'm very happy with the way the 
Bale feeders. Here's that strand I forgot. I remember that was on there. We don't need to be chewing on this, do we, girls? I don't believe that. Fuck it. Yeah. So, we'll start cutting off. We need... We'll let them clean that up. So we'll need one. They're good there. Two, three, four, five. Five bales of the seven feeders back here. Now they're getting curious. All right, let's roll. So I got my little Milwaukee box cutting knife here. This is the ticket, man. Won't quit. You always pick a spot where it doesn't overlap. Straight down. Get your knot up. Good to go. This is all. Uh, take off the net wrap. A little ice down there. Then I always come. So I started there, where it uh, met the snow edge. And I take off back here where it's been sitting on the dry ground since we placed it at the end of fall. So you know it's gonna come off nice and easy. And I come around until I get to that front part where it's icy. And what I kind of noticed then is I stop right about here. Maybe a little more. Maybe this bale is gonna be a little more forgiving. But right about there where it starts getting icy. And I peel off to where it doesn't want to come anymore. That one's froze on there too. There we go. And now I stop, otherwise you'll rip that whole trunk off. And here's what I do. I just kind of take the spear. Otherwise it just pulls everything apart and I kind of get in there a little bit. Let's see if I can get in here a little better with the camera. One hand into here. There. Surprisingly, I did that one handed. There's that froze onto there. Now I dump it over, I push it over onto its flat side because that's where it's been sitting. I'll have the best uh, chances of not completely unraveling on me. These bales are about 1300 and change, 1400 pounds, somewhere in there. My third cutting pure alfalfa weighed 1550. You see how that bottom comes out like that now? We try to do it without losing as much as we can to keep it clean out here. Come on, mama. Come on, mama. I dropped a little bit. Come on, girl. Come on. This is the first calf heifer right here in front of me. She'll have her first baby here in February. There we go. A little bit out there, but nothing bad. They'll get that cleaned up first things first, and then uh, we'll be good to go. And then this, I got the most minimal amount of waste stuck to it, and it should travel nice with me back without bouncing a bunch of hay around. I'm gonna re spear that. And there we go. One down, four more to go. All right, made the long walk back over here again. Della chores, it fed all that hay. Cattle look good, waters are good, salt's good, lick tubs are moved, gates are all shut now. I'm done. And it's 12, it's noon. Uh, and you saw when I started feeding those calves, the sun was coming up. So, made it back to the Massey. Now it's uh, time to hook up to the whoa! Time to hook out of the snowblower. And uh, once this wind goes down, a little more snow. So, fun, fun. Never ending. All right, I'm gonna hook onto this snowblower here. Thanks for watching, you guys. Appreciate it. Any comments, questions, concerns, leave me a message. We'll get you answered. Um, yeah, stay warm out there. Eat beef. Catch you later.